Next thing I want to show you is my award. I am so glad I'm being honored, uh, Adrian, while I'm living. Yeah. And I had showed my niece this award I got honored at Hampton University for my contribution to black history in the community. And I'm so proud of that. Hi, George. I'm a middle child. They had three under me and two older than me, so I'm in that middle child, you know, seeking attention. I got the middle child syndrome. Middle child syndrome. And also I'm being honored at Jay Cox Elementary School on tomorrow at 6 o'clock. That's in Norfolk, Jay Cox. Thank you, thank you, George. So now, um, I wanted to bring up a sad part of American history, and it's the whole part about slavery. Norfolk, that's where we're at now, Norfolk, Virginia, 1750, that was no, 1780, more than 80% of people in Norfolk owned slaves. Three out of four slave masters owned one to four slaves. And I will say this again, in 1780, Please, more on. than 80% of people in Norfolk owned slaves. Three out of four slave masters owned one to four slaves. And of course, that's documented in a book by Sally Hatton, published by Harvard University Press, 2001, and it's called Slave Patrols. I'm interested in it because Slave Patrols actually uh, is a book about how uh, slaves were kept in, in check, you know, and the slave patrols led later, as we know, to our what? Whole police system. From slave patrols to police system. Now, what I'm going to do is read you an excerpt from one particular um, enslaved person. Uh, he was enslaved for 40 years on a plantation in Maryland. Now, just imagine, just imagine, you have saved up for $350 to buy your freedom from your master. You only owe him 100 because he, he agreed $450. When it's time for you to pay the $100, he adds another zero. <clears throat> so what he did was he escaped eventually to what? To Canada, he said, and the rest is history. Well, I'm going to read an excerpt from his um, autobiography, and it's called Father Henson. His name was Josiah Henson, and um, this is an excerpt from his autobiography written in 1849. You have to remember now, Harry Beecher Stowe's novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, was written in 1852. You have to remember, and he's shaking his head here. This particular Josiah Henson, who escaped to Canada, is the model for the slave in Harriet Beecher Stowe's novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. You have to remember, she wrote that in 1852. Now, he's being sold. He's about to be sold. And uh, you have to remember, he said he did not hear his first sermon until he was 18, and that kind of changed him. But in the midst of his being mistreated so much, he's thinking about killing the very guy who's going to sell him. They're on a ship. And he said, I, I resolved to kill my four companions, take what money there was in the boat, then to scuttle the craft and escape to the north. It was a poor plan, maybe, and would very likely have failed. But it was as, it was as well contrived under the circumstances as the plans of murderers usually are. And blinded by passion and stung to madness, as I was, I could not see any difficulty about it. One dark, rainy night, within a few days of New Orleans, my hour seemed to have come. I was alone on the deck, Mr. Amos, that's his master, and the hands were all asleep below. And I crept down noiselessly, got hold of an axe, entered the cabin, and looking by the, and looking by the aid of the dim light, there for my victims, my eyes fell upon Master Amos, who was nearest to me. My hand slid along the axe handle. I raised it to strike the fatal blow. When suddenly the thought came to me, what? 
What? Commit murder? And you are a Christian? That's all in that, sir. Now, you have to remember that Christianity saved his master from being axed. Now, once he got to Canada, what did he do with his freedom? Josiah Henson, he used his freedom very well. One thing he found out that there was black walnut and white wood that he could make a profit of. So he started a lumber business. We're talking about 1830 something. The next thing he did with the lumber business, he opened a, a sawmill, grist mill, and a school. This was in Dawn, Canada. When I was in Ontario some years ago, I, I asked the bus driver, to, could we just drive by Dawn and maybe take a picture? And I remember him saying that we were two and a half hours away, so I couldn't do that. <laughs> well, back to his school he started. And this is an ex-enslaved person. And that school, you have to remember, when they got to Canada in the 1830s, even though this is Canada, we always say this was freedom, this was a land of freedom, blacks were not allowed to go to school with the white Canadians. So he started a school, and that school proved profitable. Black Canadians attended it, whites, and Native Americans. 